Oh, hello everyone. Welcome oh. back oh. to the Triforce Podcast. A little, a little touch on a, of sunshine on a autumn day. Oh man, um, it, it it it's just suddenly autumn. Like it went from a heat wave to holy crap. It's it, it feels like the fall. none of my clothes are appropriate. Um, yeah. I, I got rained on like totally soaked yesterday to the point where I had to, came into the office and. I, ch I changed my socks because I stepped in a puddle and my socks were like completely soaked. <laughs> oh, man. And then Ben was like, do you have a spare pair? Because mine are soaked. You have those ones. So I gave like, him a pair of socks. You have those, uh, the men's, the hold up ones, you know, like they got like the little strap. Little, the strap. Well, if I, if I was that fashionable, Sips, I wouldn't have got, they wouldn't have got wet in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, if I was yeah. wearing proper boots and suspenders and like, I don't yeah, know, leathers galoshes. or Yeah, you had your galoshes yeah. on, yeah. I would be fine, but... N I'm never. I'm never. You're not prepared. I'm not a dad like you guys. Have you got your winter outfits? If you got like boots and stuff to walk around in, wellies. No, no it's still. Uh, it's still sneakers and shorts. And uh, if it's really cold, I'll put a sweater on instead of uh, a t-shirt. But uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the shorts. Do you, do, you <laughs> I, do you have gardening clothes as well? Gardening boots. I, I don't have gardening boots. I do really own good. wellies, but I don't wear them often. But I um a couple of months ago, I, I bought. I've always, I've always wanted them, and for some reason, it's one of those things that I just never bought myself. But I've always wanted. I bought a pair of Doc Martens. Oh, nice! And I okay. uh, I've always, literally, always wanted. A you pair. can make some waffles now if you want. Or right. uh, yeah. And I, so I was at. I was out shopping with my youngest, and I saw the Doc, a Doc Martens shop, and I was like, "Do you know what? I've waited forty-seven years to get a pair of these boots. Why what have I did not?" Did you get got the them? Did you get the high-rise like red ones, or did no? You these just are go... the classic black Docs, right? The, like the, the low cut, the classic. No, they're just like they're, they're boots. All right, okay, so they go like up a bit, like yeah, the half, like proper halfway, Doc yeah. Martens boots, yeah. and um, they're super warm and very comfortable. So uh, I got them. Nice. Um, and they're for, for winter months, so when I, I can wear nice big thick socks with them. And I figure I'll just be stomping around wearing me Doc Martens when the weather turns bad. Like, I love wearing jumpers, and in the summer, of course, you can't. I don't look great in clothes, but I look really bad in a t-shirt. Get me in a jumper or a hoodie, we're away with it. I feel happy and content. So honestly, I don't mind the clothing in the winter, but I hate the, 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 the lack of heat. I despise yeah. the cold with every fiber of my being. Yeah. Same. Um, I, I, although, I don't know, maybe I've never really been a boots person, I've got to admit. I've, <laughs> I, I, even looking at these Doc Martens, I'm sort of, I, I feel like they wouldn't fit comfortably or I wouldn't know how to walk around in them, or they'd be like, I don't know, like, I just... I'm not scared. Take but the I'm... lead, mate. I, 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 obviously, I've never been a boots person because like, this is the first time I've owned them. But you feel like a king wearing them. There's yeah. just okay. something about wearing a boot. You feel prepared for anything. I think that it, it's like. Let a... me know, guys. Let me. Let, I want this in the mailbag. I want boots recommend. I want clothing style recommendations because I don't have any style. My style is hoodies and jeans, and it has been for too many years. Same. I, I want to dress like. Um, I don't want to dress like a magician. <laughs> Do you know what I, mean? but I want to dress like I want to dress like smart, but I, I'm worried that I would come across as a magician. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm like quite diminutive. I, I know, think if you dress too fancy, people might mistake you for a dandy. You oh, know what I mean? Like, like a, a dandy, foppish or, yeah, dandy. Yeah, a foppish dandy. A popping yes. jay, if you will. Yes. A popping jay, yeah. And I, I think, I mean, the one thing I'm always on the lookout for is cool t shirts. And a lot of the time, people, like, if you look up, like, cool t shirts and stuff, it's all just stuff with, like, basic bitch jokes on, or, yes. like, pictures or of skulls. Chewbacca, or these skulls. I mean, I, I've got some really genuinely unusual cool T-shirts that I, I love, um, and I like those. I want I want the the, the indie T-shirt essentially, right. independent, very few like that kind of thing. I'll pay a little more for them, but I, what I don't want is just to have to wear the same old grubby T-shirts all the time. That's not why I see I see you as a check shirt man. Yeah, I see you most more as a check shirt man as I, well. I wear a lot of check shirts as well. Yeah. You got um, lumberjack vibes going on. I, I with the boots. Let me tell you something. It's it's all about the lumberjack shirts. I'm yeah, that's a, it, like a, yeah. almost a whole look, right? There. <clears throat> it is a look. It yeah. is a look. But then I, I wear a hoodie as well, so it, it's uh, it makes it a little awkward because the hoodie hoodie's over a button up shirt doesn't it's, feel as comfortable. You got so you got the lumberjack shirt. You got the Doc Martens. Yeah. You're bald, so basically your skin. You're a skinhead now. I am you essentially <laughs> a skinhead. Yes, you, you are yes. one. No. Yeah. 
Although, to be fair to skinheads, look, the, hold on, there might be some skinheads listening. Yes, there were some asshole skinheads who were in the National Front and stuff, but a lot of it was more about music and, and all the rest of it. So I, I, I'm not going to lump all skinheads, especially as a representative of the Bold Brothers Union. I'm, I refuse to lump all skinheads in as, as racists and nutters. Um, there, there were different vibes. Skinheads are just Bold Brothers. It does come who, with some who... negative connotations, for sure, the, the, the whole thing. But yeah, I know what you mean. There are, yeah. there are some not racist ones as well. Absolutely. Uh, there's a gang, I think. There's a gang of skidheads who were, I think there's a documentary about them, who were very anti-racist, and actually they'd go seek out racist skinheads and beat them up. That's all they did. Right. That I'm, was not, I'm not advocating violence, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's just an option, though, since it's putting that out there. Just if you case. want, yeah. If you feel like that's your path. Yeah, you've, you got, a of, you've got a lot of choice, yeah. you know. And that I might think- be your path. Oh, I just, I just feel like I haven't. I'm like between styles right now. Between because like, I wore this suit because we went to this. Um, mm. this oh yeah, dinner. how was that? It was really nice. Mm. It was really nice. Obviously, I always say this, but if you hang out with charity people, they're rarely cunts. Um, <laughs> I find they really, they're yeah. really cunts. They're rarely. rarely. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, wow. There's got to be one or two in the mix, though. Uh, not that I found. I bet you, if you looked really hard, you'd find them. Maybe. I think. I think I did speak to a few people who were like, "You'd be surprised." Well, you know, yeah. who, how many actual assholes there are in this sort of industry? But um, they're all fascinating people to talk to. And we went to this big dinner at um, Bristol Art Museum, and it was sort of a charity dinner, so you had to pay a table and then had to buy some raffle tickets. Um, ten pounds each, you know, and then we had to pay on the. It was like a pub quiz, but we also had to pay to get the Joker to get oh the double points God, round. Um, you had to pay extra for all that. Yeah, well, you know, it pay to win pub yeah. quiz, isn't it? When you have to buy the Joker for cha- for charity. So you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I of course don't mind, but um, the pub quiz we. We were we we absolutely killed it at the pub quiz. Um, we destroyed it. We 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 because the whole point of it was to beat the brain surgeons. There were some brain surgeons from Bristol Children's Hospital, right? And yeah. we were supposed to get a higher score than them. And yeah, um, but what were the questions? Were the questions all about like anime and Warhammer and stuff like that? Because I no, I feel like just, brain surgeons it was would would absolutely wreck you if all the questions were related to brain surgery, right? Yeah, no, no you'd think brain surgery would be kind of their thing. Um, yeah. I, I think brains, being a brain surgeon is a very hard job. Yeah. So hard that it almost certainly consumes all of your knowledge and time. You probably don't have much time for anything else. Yeah, you're just they too lack thinking. general yeah. knowledge. They have brain surgeon maybe that Maybe common sense for them isn't so common after all. Indeed. Or even makes sense. It was so there were there was there was a pitch around, obviously, of Bristol famous Bristolians, which right. like, eh, of. is it a brain? Was no, it that racist a- guy, the statue? Um was it was his name called um No. What was his name no. again? I can't even remember his name. <laughs> oh god, what was uh, it? They toppled the statue and dragged it into the harbor. Tear down his statue, we've all forgotten Colston. about it. Colston. Colston, yeah. Was he on the list? Uh he was it that might have been his name. No, he wasn't on the list. A, a few people were though that I recognise, like Dave Dave Prowse. Stuff like Dave Browse, Darth Vader himself. Darth Vader, yeah. He was um, from Bristol. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. That's why they didn't let him uh, voice Darth Vader. Yeah. Because you, you can watch the behind the scenes of Dave Browse delivered the lines so that you know his movements were in time and the other actors could respond to it. And he was like, I don't know why they cut me. I, th- I thought my <laughs> performance was fine. If this is a diplomatic vessel, where's the dip? Where's the ambassador? <laughs> He's like holding so got, her by the throat. They got James Earl Jones to do the voices, yeah. too, which felt like the right choice. To- <clears throat> right. Oh, it was the right choice. Yeah. Um. Anyway, and then there was a there was a round where you had to build a uh, a grommet um out of plasticine, right? Which we had done on Jingle Jam. That is such a Bristol thing as well, right? Because it's the home <laughs> of our or the used to be the home of Ardman, Ardman, or maybe still. Well, is. so Ardman are the big sponsor of the the what is the Watson Grommet um. Grand Appeal, it's called. Oh my which the, god! It's just the Bristol, Bristol. So free advertising, then, is what you're saying. They're 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 yes. trying to get all of their IPs in there. Yes. Trying to get some. Oh, I see how it is. And so yeah, they did. They donated some things to the raffle. Like you could buy, you could. Um, and then there was an auction as well. Like uh, oh, yeah. at the end, where you where they were selling like a football shirt signed by some Manchester United people, and there was like a trip around Ardman and a, and a few other bits and bobs. So yeah, it was um it's good good night. Like nice. it was a good quiz. It's a good night. We won the raffle. Well, we Lydia won the first prize of the raffle, but but by the time she got to the front, 
uh, the next few people have been called, so she didn't get her first pick of the of the prizes. That but she got, like, is a, a nice disgrace. Prize. That That's is a disgrace. a disgrace. That's a disgrace. I know, but it's still for charity, so we didn't really mind. And she got a prize that she wanted anyway. We we won the pub the pub. We won the quiz as well. Nice. Which was kind of did you get up on a table and do the Triple H suck it uh, move, <laughs> the, the pelvic <laughs> thrust into the crossed over wrist? Well, well, we had to. Obviously, every table was split into two teams of five, and we came out. The, well, the team on the other side of us came first, and we came second. <laughs> there was a little bit of like sharing of uh, answers, I think. Right. But we didn't think we'd done all that well, and I think we just. I think we got unlucky on the Joker and the. I think Mike and Ravs and some of the other guys on the other te- table just knew fucking answers. Mike and Lydia were like, she was like, I love a quiz. Me and Mike literally do Trivial Pursuit every night and we have for years. <laughs> it's like, we know, we know this. And I was like, damn. So then they did, they killed it. Lydia is, of course, in her 60s. Yes. Yes. So people, people that play Trivial Pursuit every night. Um, so yeah, there was like a, there was like a music round as well, which we, we totally nailed. And um, yeah, it was, it was a really good time. Really, really nice. Really, just really chill. And Bristol Art Museum, if you've never been, it's like free. It's like it's like a also it's like a regular. I'm museum uncultured as well. swine. I would never step foot near an establishment it's a such nice, as it's that. It's a nice place to walk around. It's a little bit like one of these old. I think Bristol Museum and Art Gallery is a little bit like Bristol Zoo used to be. I.e., it's tried to. Modernize. Is it closed now, Bristol Zoo? It is closed now. Yeah. For good. It. The wild yeah, place has taken over. I guess. Right? What? Yeah, it was a nice zoo. Actually, it was a really nice zoo. It was yeah. a nice little city zoo. Yeah. but I think its history was a little bit. Dodgy. I think it, I think I think they need more space too for what they're like all to zoos, do. right? Like zoos these days. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but certainly I think there's this real push for conservation and yeah. giving giving enough space, space. for the animals yeah, and it. not cruelty and and cost, right? Because caring for these animals properly, especially an animal that's fucking designed to live in the in Africa. Yeah, do you know what I mean? In 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 sunshine all the time. Um, you know, and we're moving it's it to a, the it's fucking. It's weird because it's a big space in the middle of a residential area, um, effectively. But then, in terms of a zoo, it's quite a small space, right? For what they what they need it, to do. It, it was quite well. I think again, it, yeah, it's it's in the middle of Clifton, and so it's prime real estate. Yeah. You know, it's it's like the. Can you imagine if there was a zoo in the most like expensive part of London? You know, there is. Um, <laughs> yes, it's, it's, is there? Yeah, it's like it's well, like it's, right, in, it's in North London, smack in the middle of the uh, of where. It's like near Camden, isn't it? Um, where is it? It's like close to. Isn't it close to Hyde Park or? Like just just L- north London of- Zoo is near Regent's Park. Regent's Park, Park sorry, yeah. yeah. It's right near Camden, which is oh. you know but it is i mean Camden Camden's got its 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 good bits and its bad bits, but it's not mm. like I, I it's yeah, I think I think it's in the right it's in the right spot. I mean it's anyway. it's not that far from, from like Mayfair and stuff. No, so yeah. They've it's- sort of moved the zoo out into the country a bit. It's called there's a new sort of place that's taken over called the Wild Place. Yeah, I've been there too. To. Yeah, it's good. Is it? It's nice, yeah. It's a lot more um, open, you know. It's not. It, it's it, it it's it's open and feels a bit more, a little bit more. I, I should say natural for the animals. They have much bigger enclosures, and uh, it's just a lot more open for them to. You feel like you're you're in a in like a safari park more. You know, it's not one, but it's just it's just a lot bigger. There's a lot more space for them to to set up stuff. Like they have a huge huge giraffe enclosure. Um, well, that's but, that's what needs to be. F- I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, these are so huge tough. animals that are used to having uh, like a ton of space to themselves, right? So it 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 it's only right that you should strive to, if you can, um, you know, put them somewhere like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I think they've done a pretty good job. It's, it, so I think it's the nice zoo was fine, but I mean, it was a it was a bit of a relic. It needed updating, and, and it, it, a lot of people have tried, and it changed a lot over the years. And the same with Bristol Art Museum and Gallery, but it's it's kind of still a little bit like. One of these British museums where it's a little bit, um, oh, look at this random eclectic collection of stuff from other people's countries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that we've managed to accumulate over the years. And there's a lot of taxidermied animals. Yes. Um, which I'm generally a little bit <laughs> like uncomfortable with. What do you um, think about taxidermy? I, <clears throat> this isn't something we've ever talked about before. I want to know. Taxidermy, generally. I don't, yeah. I don't think about it a lot. <laughs> um, I'll just put that out there, but no, but, but I'm not. I'm not saying how often do you think about it. I'm saying let's say you have a beloved pet, yes, uh, or you've killed a rare animal, yes. How do you feel about people having taxidermied 
uh, animals around their house. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't kill animals for sport, and I would never memorialize a pet in that in that way. So uh, my my opinion of it is just like probably against. But again, I don't really think about it that much. But if you if you are uh, somebody who hunts and you you want trophies and stuff, then I guess for you, then that that that's probably a, a great thing that it can be done or it exists or whatever, right? I, I, mm. I think yeah, like for my end, like you go to the you go to these this place and there's literally a taxidermied everything. Um, you know, there's a giant gorilla and a fucking bison and all sorts of shit, right? And you you th- th- at first you're like, oh, these are all a bit I don't like this. And then right. it, almost like within like five minutes you're like, okay. I'm just look. I'm, and then, and then it kind of becomes interesting because you can see what are the kinds of animals. things that you've never seen taxidermied. Because I think, I think we've probably all seen stuffed animals, and it's it's normally big deer and moose and stuff like that, right? Occasionally a bear. So I, head, I, I have um, birds. I, I've seen uh, taxidermy of like pets. Right. Have you ever like, seen like a like a donkey? <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no. Or like even a donkey head. Like there's certain animals that I think there's a line in the world of taxidermy that, that they, they will not cross, right? For whatever reason. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I just think some animals are, are less beloved, I guess. Yeah. Um, but you see cats, sometimes dogs. Um, I'm just thinking if you love an animal, yeah. uh, I mean, we love Aggie, um, but I wouldn't <laughs> want her dead. <laughs> Hanging around the house, <laughs> stuffed. Like, no, yeah, no, no, you're not. You're not wrong. I think this is just. A it's like, weird, isn't it? It feels like something. What about a don't painting of a pet? Like a big. You commission a big painting of a I I, of a pet. You have a, a like a small picture, but it's like a grand painting. Of I think it's a little pet. grandiose for. A or pet. maybe even that you sitting and the pet is sitting on your lap, and that's the painting. I just think it's a bit, uh, it's big upping, big upping oneself and one's pet a little too much for me. Yeah. I think it lacks subtlety. Here, it, here's, here's something um, I like, right? Mrs. Wait, hang F on a has, second. Let me just pause for a second. You, would you, pref- are you saying it, you prefer that animal to be like hard to see? You like, you, you prefer it to be in a zoo where it's like hidden under a rock and there's a picture of it and you're like, is it in there? And you look for it for a bit. You can't really see it, but you can see its tail sticking out. Why would like, he yeah, be I've saying that? That makes no sense. No, it's I, like I'm he's going on a treasure hunt at the zoo. Versus the taxidermied one, where you know you can see it up close, it's right there. You know, you you prefer no, it I think to be like both, uh, behind I think the they, curtain. No, I think they both lack. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like if you have a giant picture of yourself and your pet, it, it's like anyone having a giant picture of themselves in their house. It just feels a bit twattish. Sure, right. How like do you if I went it? into someone's house and they had a huge picture of themselves, like sat in a big red fancy armchair with their dog at their side and they've got their hand on them and, you know, they're, they're sort of stuff in the background that's meant to mean something, I'd feel like, just fuck off. I came running for a cup of tea. I don't need to, you know what I mean? Well, I've got a picture of myself on my wall next to me in the office here. And I've never been to your house. No, it's not my house. It's in the <laughs> office. It's for everyone to see. <laughs> it's true. I went well, to Lewis's, I I went to Lewis's to house one time, and one thing I noticed about Lewis is that um, he has a, a, it's like a, a clean and tidy house for the most part, okay? Except that there's just areas of his house where it looks like he stood uh, still like a, like a plank, and all of his clothes just fell off and landed on the floor, <laughs> and then he just left them there. You know, just like the magic, pile. like something out of like morph or something. You know, like it just uh, his 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 clothes just like That's sort of actually very true melted yeah. off of him, and then he just left them on the floor there where like they some people have been raptured. Yes, raptured. Yeah. So what what Mrs F has her grandmother uh, had a dog that she loved. It was a little um, uh, sausage dog, and when the dog died, they made they they had a bronze of not of the dog but of a. Uh, Sausage dog, a, 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 yeah, sausage dog that looked like this one, and right. in, a, in his sort of in a, in a playful pose that he would often have. So if I wanted to do one of Aggie, when she sits down, because she doesn't have a tail, she sits kind of like like a person, like she sits down on her ass with her legs right. sticking out, right? And that's the bronze I would have if I had one made, and that's kind of sweet because it just looks like you use it as a doorstop or whatever. It's just around. It's not in some fancy place. It's just in the house. 
to remind you of them. But at no point are you thinking, I have to put this front and center. And if someone else sees it, they're not even going to know. They might just ask, oh, that's very nice. And you might say, oh, yeah, it's a it's a bronze of my dog, Agnes. She uh, she died about 20 years ago. And be, oh, that's very sweet. But having a gigantic stuffed Aggie just feels a bit, yeah. a bit, cre- a bit creepy. It, feels, yeah. it says to me... What if you had like a massive, so a massive camera. Doberman or something like that? And you got <laughs> it stuffed. That'd be weird, right? Or an American bully XL. Oh, Those well, dogs yeah. that they ban. You get them stuffed while you can because they're, I you, think you won't be uh, able to. Taxidermy soon. works well if you're a quirky kind of person who wears like frilly, lacy, you know, a dress, you know, and a Victorian era sort of veil, you know, and you've got this house full of like little yeah. tables and little stands and yeah. little framed thimbles and things, weird, quirky stuff. And framed then you have like thimbles. taxidermy <laughs> yeah. stuff. You've you know got like, all your Monopoly pieces like of yesteryear framed and uh, Yeah, on you've display. got like all this stuff. collection. You know, like But you like know what, Lewis, I'm not, I'm not kidding, but you're looking for a new vibe. Go for go for quirky dandy who has taxidermy around the house. Go for like goth. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe make Victoriana. that your profile. See how many swipes you get for that one. You'll only get goth girls. You'll get there's no of shame goth in that. Girls, yeah. Let me tell you yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Flax has become one with his uh, Doc Martens. Yeah, with so, my boots. Yeah, he's just he's acquire... putting some heavy eye makeup on, and yeah. he's ready to go. I think I think I could rock some eye makeup. Man, I think don't you could, see yeah. many goth girls in my age range. God be said. In thirties, no, that's true. Very, f- I don't think I've even seen. You're like just not one. looking hard enough. <laughs> no, well, uh, that's, it's not. It's not a question of looking hard enough, Sips. It's like there's like hundreds of women on these apps. Like you know, you swipe. That's you know. Yeah, but hold the, on, hold on. You're looking in the wrong place for goth. Oh, I see. There's a, there's a there's a dedicated there's probably dating yeah, app for a, a separate app. goth people. Hey, listen, I just got to go. So they're a shadowy breed. I got to let somebody into my house. I'll be right back. Do it. We'll carry on. The the goth girls are a shadowy breed. I see. You know what I mean? They they don't. They're in the shadow in the corners. Yeah, they lurk like a vampiress. They 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 don't. Sort of I don't know if goth is in right now. Let me know. Go- in goth's the, never it, been let me in. Know if- That's the point of goth. It's not in. It's anti in. Whatever in is, goth ain't. Like even if people have, I've seen. Their I mean, obviously, the big black eye makeup is is very popular, and that's quite gothic in a right, sense. Right, but equally, right? having a bald head doesn't make you a skinhead. Having eye makeup doesn't make you a goth. No, the goths out there that, will know what I'm talking about. No, but I guess what I was saying is that things that are cool influence general culture and general look and general style, right? And this is why we get the mullet coming back. Right, for whatever fucking God. reason, everyone's got a moustache and a mullet Australians, now. that's what it was. They, they repopularized it. Um, listen, uh, if you think about it, the problem with, with proper goth, which was in the 80s, when, the, when it came, al- came along to like the, the 2000s, everybody was emo, right? That was the thing, emo. And it, you know, bands that had the eye makeup and maybe wore a sort of Victorian officer's jacket and thought that that made them emo. If you look up the history of emo, it's definitely not related to, to those bands, uh, the sort of American emo version. And then there was like screamo and all this kind of stuff. It just meant angsty teenagers listen to this music. That's essentially what it was. But that's not what emo was. If you look up the history of emo music, I'm sure there are some emo fans out there that will know what I'm talking about. Um, th- this ain't it. So I think goth was appropriated by the emo movement and places like Hot Topic uh, basically said, oh yeah, this is all kind of goth. But that, that was never goth. Goths were meant to be almost shocking to, to normies. And it was a sort of re- reaction to punk. Goth was sort of different again and kind of more more genuinely gothic. And big hair and shit like that. And that's, uh, I don't know if that's still a, a vibe that people go for. I think the reason you don't see goths on Tinder is because uh, either they, as people get older, they change their look and say, but, it, but you could seriously appeal to those goths, Lewis, by, by going <laughs> right. in there and you, they'd relive their youth. I could your, bring up their inner goth. Like, the, so goth actually, the gothification. There are actually of loads of goths, but I didn't realize they were goths. Yes, they're all basically they were, retired they were, goths. They were hiding. They're retired. Yeah. They've blended in. Maybe you, that is it. Maybe they feel like they have to conform, but that's not a very gothic thing to do, is it? No, you but know? it's not It's not even conforming. I mean, most, most people that are part of a movement or a, a, a sort of a group when they're younger me- mellow as they get older because it's a lot of work to be in these groups you know you've got to go to the meetings or whatever you oh my go god to the, the, goth, right the goth put the boots on i mean lacing those up's got to take the hour yeah Do you know what I mean? and like, you, maybe you've got an office job now maybe now you're an accountant and you're har- parking back to your goth days and you're still listening to those bands and all the rest of it and it's a big part of your identity and who you were and you've grown up but now you're just thinking, ah, I've got kids. I don't want to go to school. There's like a goth like handshake shit. or like a goth code you can let you can sort of hit, hint at to let other just people l- know. Look, look sad. That you're an- <laughs> 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 just look sad in the corner. 
Um, I always thought go goths were in the most impenetrable group, I think, because you were either a goth or you were sh shunned by goths. Oh. Um, I've always felt the most, genuinely the most um, agreeable and chill group is heavy metal fans. Oh, yeah. Um, like, they will fucking have anybody. They're just up for the crack, and they always feel like it's a lot more welcome. You just need to fucking love heavy metal and preferably have long hair. But you're in. Um, it, it, and that's it. It is quite a macho thing, I'd say, metal. Um, but at the same time, I've never felt... Most of the people I know Not that are really. metal, metal heads a lot are of women very into chill. It. A lot of women into it. And it's... it's Hell it's, yeah. It's, it's good, too. Like, I think it's... They, they're all, they, they have always been very welcoming. I think there's something... Someone... Yeah, it's, like, more popular than you think, as well. As well, like right. Generally. So when I say it's macho, I'm not saying it's exclusive to to men. No. But if you look at um, heavy metal, I think it, it is a very aggressive musical form, and and the men in heavy metal are expected to be oddly Bearded. this mix of yes, like heavy, grrr, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, if you want to talk about hair metal, the reason that was seen as not real metal, of course, is because the guys basically dressed like girls, you know, and they right. wore all the kind of girly clothes and everything, and to appeal. To a more loose, loose sort of broad market, if you like, but real heavy metal, like all that kind of stuff, that was about the, the hell and Satan and darkness, and uh, tattoos that. and beards and the you know, Vikings and shit, um, which is very macho. It's not Vikings exclusionary. Are, are it's a very, celebration. The Viking look is very in, very right metal, now. very. A metal. lot of people. A lot of people I've seen uh, looking for a Viking with tattoos and the big beard. You know, that's like a big. A, I think that I don't know. There's a few obviously celebrities who've popularized that look. Um, yeah, the lad who played Thor. I mean, that's a pretty pretty Viking look, isn't it? Right. Mm. What's his name? Chris Chris Hemsworth. Yes. Yeah, he's an Aussie though. What, you can what? still be. A he's a bloody good looking bloke. Viking Chris and an Aussie. You no, know, he's Australian. He can't be a Viking. They're from uh, opposing ends of the globe. Can you imagine words. the alternate reality? Where would even be the Vikings? The, the Australians would be the Vikings. Would they be? No, they would be raided. They'd be raiding down through. Um, all the islands. I mean, I, I assume that they'll <laughs> be raiding of, Japan. Uh, <laughs> oh, what, what a great alternate reality! Yeah, the Vikings of Australia. They'd make their way up Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, then up, <laughs> up through Malaysia, the Philippines, Taiwan, China, and they'd have to go around the coast of Korea to get to Japan. Yeah, I mean, those islands just asking to be raided. Look at them. <laughs> yeah. They wouldn't know what to hit them. No, <laughs> they're all too I assume, nice. Assume, don't you assume that the Pacific Islanders? Given how much the history of places like the, the Pacific Islands is based around warfare, like the hacker is like a yeah. war thing, you know, I assume that the, these lads were fighting each other all the time. But honestly, they're not that close together. I mean, the Vikings, no. it's like a 10 minute ferry to get over to the UK. But Christ, it's a hell of a stretch. It, it is. It's like talking about, um, we saw a bit of this when we were in New Zealand, you know, and them sort of the Maori arriving on New Zealand and their mm. story and sort of, you know, just the constant wars they would have between groups of them, even in New Zealand, you know. Yeah. Um, and so in a sense, like, yeah, it was awful that the West invaded and kind of took over and colonised their their islands. But in a, in a sense, it also stopped them fighting amongst themselves quite so much. That could be wrong. Um, please take that with a pinch of salt. I'm not an expert on the history of this of the islands, but I, I got that general gist mm. from from somewhere, and it, it could be it could be wrong. So please, whenever I talk about these things, I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't worry, sorry, don't worry. I'm, I'm sure, back. Sure sorry about that. Hello, we were floundering without you, Sips. <laughs> really, oh, we weren't yeah. floundering. We talked about goths. Good heavens! Wait, still. I, I felt well, like we I was... just talked about it for a little bit, and then we talked about metal. But Sips we, went away to try and get yeah. rid of. Yeah, I wanted to. I was trying to dodge the uh, the conversation. I didn't want to talk about goths. So they had a load of other stuff at the at the Bristol Museum. They have like rocks or minerals, I suppose, as we now are supposed to call them from yes. Breaking Bad. Um, it's the, which is nice. I like. I love looking at rocks from various different. Strata. Nice. Um, there's a whole bunch of. Put like, that on your like... Tinder profile as well. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this is something I read the other day. Um, it was just like, don't be, don't be ashamed of your, um, of your the things you're interested in. Like, uh, obviously, I can, you know, I went into Uniqlo when I was in. Um, I was talking to someone about this this morning. I went to Uniqlo when I was in America, and I think they have one in London as well, a couple. But they, um, they have this checkout where you just place all of your stuff you want to buy in a bin and it scans it all automatically it like every piece of clothing has a little tag on it or chip on it and so you don't have to beep everything it just 
I, I bought like 10 things and it was just like, oh, you've bought these 10 things. Do you want to go now? And I'm like, yes, please. And I was obsessed with this, this ch- ch- checkout technology <laughs> in, a, in a really nerdy way. And I'm not, I'm not ashamed of that. I, can, I don't mind nerding out about checkout. No. In the same way, you know, if you like looking at some, you know, titanium containing geode or whatever, fucking good for you. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, I'm no, a big fan I, of that. I agree. I, I think if you're, if you're into something, you like it. Absolutely. Don't be mm. ashamed. But you just uh, might it? not be pulling Pamela Anderson on Tinder with uh What was it what was it Sophie said? I might have told you this before, but she said this phrase, which is don't yuck on my yum. Fucking <laughs> 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 a horrible phrase. Yeah, it is that kind is of horrible. horrible, yeah. Speaking but, of Sophie, right? I was I was uh reading about Welsh nationalism for no reason. All right. All I was right. reading about it. Um, and this is this is quite interesting, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce any of the Welsh words in this. But there was, um, I, I will find the details of it for you guys. Carry on talking for a moment, and then we'll we'll come back. Okay, sure. So, um, yeah, like the the art gallery's got loads of random. It's got a load of Chinese bowls, oh, whatever. Yeah. Which I've no idea of the value of these things. You need to get way, somebody shape, from right? uh, Bargain Hunt to. Um... To, well, exactly. I used to you. watch all these old antique shows. And antique around these museums. Show as well, yeah. I'm looking at like a vase, and I'm like, that's probably worth you know a couple of grand, right? But you got you got no fucking idea whether this thing is one of a kind or there's millions of them, or it's a modern reproduction. I've got no idea like what I'm looking at with half of this stuff. Yeah. And so some, sometimes I'm walking around these places, and I'm like, I am. I could not be less interested in this whole section of the museum. Yeah. You know, um, I, I I think we might have talked about this before, but you know, the British Museum and having all of their like like something like ninety five or ninety nine percent, some huge percentage of of items that they've got is just never been displayed. It's yeah. all in the back. Yeah, and some lad was nicking them. Yeah, yeah, some guy was stealing them too. I mean, some of it may be like you said, re- just really boring bowls and stuff like that 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 nobody cares about. I mean. I I went to uh, a couple of years ago. We went to Windsor Castle and we did the the tour of Windsor Castle. And there's a room in there full of guns. Like it's just tons, but old guns like muskets and like uh, you know like oh. pirate pistols and stuff like that. Oh, Lewis, it sounds great. At the it sound was. Kind of, it, I thought it. Do you know it was pretty? It was pretty cool. It was interesting and it was really well presented as well like it See, was this grand, sounds great you know? it was I, a huge like <laughs> cabinet it's up he to the ceiling muskets. of muskets and like hunting oh, rifles oh, and yeah. pistols but like old ones you know like really oh. old ones and Did they, they have, like the baker handles? rifle and stuff oh, yeah. from sharp <laughs> oh yeah That's soldiering all right and i thought that so, was kind of cool like i thought that is uh, cool. if you're gonna go somewhere and look at something old that should be, I think that should be the standard, you know? I, I think that there's a tendency for people to go to museums to see old shit, because like a supermarket, it's convenient. It's loads of stuff from loads of area, like uh, yeah. histories in one big building. Yeah. But if you go, there are tons of little museums and little things all over the fucking place that are way more local and just as interesting. They're just not as big collections. When we were in Santorini, we went to the museum, the Santorini Museum of like Bronze Age Greek islands. Yeah, and it, it was really interesting. They had some cool stuff in there, some cool mosaics, and and uh, it, it was nice to see. It was nice to think about how people lived back then and the trading that went on, and just think how exciting it would be. You're on an island, you haven't seen any traders for a couple of months, and they turn up and they've got all this new stuff. You know, it's like the only way to get it. You can't just fucking order it. It just turns. Yeah, up but on then a boat you've you've just been and- in the same place the whole time, and all you've got is like you know a harvest of cabbages or whatever. Like you, know, I, I think that the, the the climate of the Greek islands lends itself to a bit more than just cabbages. You've just it, got they, a full harvest of goat's cheese and, that, and olives <laughs> and, and olives. wine. That doesn't sound too bad. Right, to me. No, that's not too bad <laughs> at all, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, I could so, do something with that. Yeah. All right. So you mentioned Sophie. Obviously, she's Welsh, um, part of the Welsh mafia at the Yogs. And for some reason, I was reading about something called the flooding of Trewerin, um, which was uh, the river Tr- Trewerin in Gwyneth in Wales. Apologies, Welsh listeners, for my <laughs> pronunciation. Um, but essentially, the, the there was a village called Capel Kellen that, despite the protests, um, they flooded it so they could get more water to Liverpool. Right? right. That it's kind of a weird thing, but they basically came up with this dam. Um, and they were like, this is a great idea. This will help uh the people of Liverpool, a private corporation called um Liverpool Corporation Waterworks. Um, they basically flooded this village where people lived, and it was a Welsh language village. It was one of the few places where people only speak Welsh there, or that's the primary language right. at least. And so um, what did they do? They because they could not speak Welsh, they were unable 
to, to understand. parlay with these people <laughs> and they just flooded them one night. Yeah, and they just washed them into the sea. No, um, they, they just said to them, well, it's happening, we're going to do it. And they did it and they moved them all out and flooded the valley and their town was lost. Um, and this led to a lot of opposition. Um, this was in the, uh, the 60s, I think. Oh. And uh, a sort of Welsh nationalist movement grew out of it, featuring a group called uh, the Movement for the Defence of Wales, which was abbreviated to MAC. Now, I'm going to attempt to pronounce this, Muriad Amthifin Cymru, which was the Movement for the Defence of Wales, which was a paramilitary Welsh nationalist organisation. Okay. Jeez. Okay. This was in the 60s. Uh, they, were, they, were, they bombed things. They blew things up. They didn't, I don't think they killed any people. Sadly, they blew up a couple of their, their own members. Blew themselves up. They blew they up a blow dam up. and they flooded a whole town. <laughs> <laughs> they blew up like the transformer at the entrance, not the robot, but like the electrical transformer and a few other things like pylons and stuff to try and fuck with the infrastructure right. to to raise the issue that that they were not happy about this. Um, so yeah, they, they, I, I had never heard of this. I'd never heard of this um, at all. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, the Welsh nationalist mu movement MAC um, was an active active in. Uh, a little bit of paramilitary terrorism and there is a thing in wales um that you can see it's a it's a, a wall that's been painted with the phrase uh, again apologies to the welsh uh kofuik druerin which means remember tri truerin which is like essentially like saying remember the alamo for the welsh right and it's it's a stone wall near lanar histed in keredigion in wales and it's like the, the, someone painted this and now it's there and they keep repainting it every time someone comes and and, and fucks with it it doesn't matter you daff get, has it tattooed all across his back i, I would they not can't be surprised. paint over that so and he's got like there's t-shirts and banners replica murals so they, they, i've never heard of any of this stuff um and the one of the reasons I, I haven't heard of it is first of all it's kind of a weird story that i don't think is particularly well known but i was watching you know limmy Right? Yeah, yeah. So he was he do, he streams quite often where he watches old game shows on like British telly from their seventies and eighties. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that sounds great. It's really funny, and he watches them and pauses them, talks about it because obviously times have changed so much that sometimes these things feel so hopelessly dated that it's just unbelievable to think that this is in in my lifetime. This is what TV was like, sort of thing. Yeah. And one of them was Family Fortunes with Bob Monkhouse was the presenter, Good and they Lord. get they get the couple up there, and you know they say we asked a hundred people, blah blah blah. And then you have to buzz in, give an answer, and if it's on the board, your team can choose to pass or play, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question is, name, living or dead, name a famous Scotsman. And neither of the people at the buzzer buzzed. And Bob's <laughs> waiting for an answer, and he's waiting for an answer, and Limmy's like, get to fuck, like, what is going on here? <laughs> and they literally could not think of it. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, it's grim. So neither his point was, this is why Scotland is not really part of the UK. It's like, you could name a famous Englishman quite easily, but for some reason, these three or four, as it is, separate countries combined to one, we still manage to ignore what's happening in each other's, across each other's borders, even though we're the closest neighbours it's possible to be. Rab C. Nesbitt. He's not a real person. Oh, shit. Groundskeeper Willie. <laughs> Played by an American. Uh, I'm just joking. I would have just said Sean Mel, Connery, Mel, right? Mel when was this, in the 80s? Mel Gibson is not Scottish. You could just, no, 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 but Braveheart. Right, um, so he, he said... Willie, Willie Wallace, William so Wallace. So the thing is, William Wallace, people other than people that read about history, this was pre-Braveheart. Had people heard of William Wallace? Maybe in oh, Scotland they had, but I don't not. think we'd heard about it down here. It was That's Braveheart true. popularized the... Uh, myth of William Wallace, because that film is completely ahistorical. But it was, a uh, you know, Scottish people came out of that movie wanting to fucking kill us all. I'm amazed. You know what they should have done? They should have timed the independence vote with the release of Braveheart. Yes. They would have fucking won. Well, they would have just gone crazy, yeah. I would say Billy Connolly, but that wouldn't work back in the 70s. No, this was the 80s. He this was big the in the 80s. Yeah, Billy was Connolly, Billy Connolly would, work? would that have worked? Yes, absolutely. Billy Connolly. Connolly. Sean, Sean Connery, Billy Connolly. Sean Connery. Um, I forgot John about Logie Sean Baird. Connery. <coughs> Robert Burns, yeah, Alexander Duncan Graham Bannatyne. Bell, Rabbi, Rabbi Burns, <laughs> Duncan, Rabbi 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 Burns. Burns. Duncan Bannatyne, uh, Duncan Bannatyne, <laughs> I mean, Bannatyne. James McAvoy, uh, David Tennant. You could keep going. I mean, Kenny Dalglish. We could go footballers easily. Alex fucking Ferguson. Well, no, but these wouldn't work in the eighties, would they? Would Alex Ferguson work in the eighties? No, probably not. But that, that that was the thing. There were still plenty of famous Scottish people about. I mean, Sean Connery, the umpire, was one of the biggest movie stars around. The umpire Sean from Connery, SAS, yeah. the umpire. The guy from Gladiators? Gladiators, ready! The guy <laughs> from the... That wasn't until the 90s either. Oh my god. Yeah, wow. Gladiators is that where, we, is that where we've come sure. to? The guy from Gladiators already. <laughs> it was iconic.
Oh, that's tragic. Well, I mean, that's that's good stuff. Like, I, I I think it's it's interesting how we have such. I was wondering if other countries have this as well. Like, you know, in Japan, do they have an area that is like Wales or like Scotland, or, mm. or, or do any other countries have like these little kind of sub? I think in in some some Spain, northern Spain, I think they have yeah. like Catalonia. I think that's quite yeah. You got the Basque thing. country as well, and all that. It, so, Canada's yeah. huge, but like, there, it's very. Um, you know, like like I grew up in Ontario, and I I, I could I, at the time politicians, whatever, all from Ontario. That if you went to another province, they'd just be like, "Huh, what, what are you talking about?" You know, like there there's right, right, tons right. of like just local because the French Canada is different, local yeah. specific stuff. Yeah, and then French Canada itself is super super localized too. And then I know in in China, I guess they have different languages. As well, they have Cantonese and mandarin for different areas too so i guess it i guess it must be more prevalent than you realize it's not just an english not british sort of weird thing yeah to well, have like regional, no, regional like, accents and yeah. stuff even canada's got regional accents like oh hell yeah go. i mean it, i think it, it, it's perfectly normal i mean look at the u.s yeah the u.s example. as well yeah the difference crazy. between the states can be enormous like there's no way that you would say that new york and texas have much in common at all like, no you couldn't yeah. really think of them as being more different yeah um, but that's that's one thing. But the thing it's is, true. I think it's definitely more pronounced than the counties that we have. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the difference between north and south is very different. But I, I think if you think about Scotland, for one thing, the TV is different. They have BBC Scotland, right? So different. You know, there would be shows shown in Scotland that would not be shown down here um, at all, and there would be shows that we would show that you couldn't get in Scotland, even though they really wanted to watch. They them. did I, show I thing about uh, that. Balamori, um in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did. Which is a documentary of Scottish life. It I is, mean, absolutely. Yeah. What's the story in Balamori? Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to yeah. know? Indeed. <laughs> That's very aggressive. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you fucking yeah. like to know what the story is in Balamori today? You nosy fucker. He's yeah. coming Wouldn't in Wouldn't you here. like to fucking know? Get out of Balamori. <laughs> You're not fuck. welcome Step here. Get the fuck out of Balamori. I don't want to see you here ever again. That's the final episode of Balamore. Yeah. <laughs> they see, they push out the foreigners. Yeah. yeah. Bloody camera ba crew. Ba Balam exit. Balam exit means Balam exit. I think you're yeah, going to yeah. get that a lot, though. It's the same in, uh, in well, Northern Ireland has a lot of its own its own stuff, right? They probably have, similar to Scotland, they've probably got, like, uh, you know, BBC Northern Ireland and, and whatever. Like, it, it it'll be... It'll be localized, but like regional for like where where they are, sort of thing. Um, but a lot of stuff you'll just never you'll never hear of. I mean, even in England, it's the same, right? You got like the we're, like I live fairly close to the southwest, but like you don't get any of the local news from the southwest. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, it's all centric to to here. I mean, nothing no. happens in the south. No. I'm still thinking about that those muskets and and guns. <laughs> oh man, honestly, yeah. Right, like, nothing a... excites me more than like a big picture of a naval battle from the Napoleonic oh, era. Don't get oh, me yeah. started Jeez. on that era, mate. I fucking love yeah. it. So Although... me and um, so me and me and Ben and uh, we we had a friend come down last week, Chris Peach, and um, we did a sharp. Do you call him episode. the Peach? We call him Peachy. Yeah, Peachy, of course. Right, Peachy. Um, Ray! Ray! He's, Peachy. He's, he's a this fucking legend. <laughs> what? Fucking Peachy. You Whoa! get on really well with him. He's a fellow. I love Peachy. Baldian. Oh and, fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, you you you'd love him. So he, he came down with all of these Napoleonic era stuff he painted. All and, right, he's my best friend. And he painted up Sharp and all the characters from Sharp. And we did a <sighs> games night, and it was so good. I love Napoleonics. That's like my one of my all time favorite eras of history. It's so I know. fascinating. It was it was such an interesting. And I I be I started watching Sharp in preparation for it. And I watched all <laughs> the old nineties Sean Bean. You know, swaggering around, getting shot, swashbuckling around, getting all the women. You know, it was a real, it's a real, it was a real of yeah. its time thing. Sharp was. Um, I think, I think it was a really fun show. Um, the the thing is, obviously, all the battles were like, there's a French division coming to, and there's like four lads. Yeah, I mean, yes, yes. and they've got five lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's exactly all very that. skirmishy. Um, uh, it had the first episodes have Brian Cox in from Succession. Yeah, the yeah, big, the big boss, and he, he which was is, in loads of stuff. He was though, in Manhunter, which, Man really Hunter, which is the uh, he was he was the original he Hannibal was the Lecter, original he? Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, yeah. The second episode has Daniel Craig in as an evil English sort of officer who who rapes someone. 
Oh my god. Yes. Isn't that fucking insane? Yes. Yeah. There's someone else is in an episode. I think Mark Strong is in an episode yes. as well. Uh, there, there's a like all of those shows that you watched that were like the 90s telly shows are just fucking all the Hollywood actors you see now. It's like, like oh shit. Like Bill. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, is that guy? It's, it's quite funny. Like all the sketch shows that had Olivia, Olivia Coleman is she's used in to everything. be in everything, didn't she? Um, and did half the adverts for British big, telly. Yeah. She 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 was a prolific like, yeah. telly star before she got big in movies. So, uh, you know, you know the meme question that's going around at the moment, uh, how often do you think about the Roman Empire, right? That's the meme yes. question, which I yeah. think is really funny. It is actually a really funny meme. Um, well, I didn't even know about this. And Sarah asked me for a TikTok like, <laughs> yeah. blind. I didn't yeah. realize yeah. it was, was a like, thing, but my son asked often. me that the other day. And I was well, like, well, this is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, it actually comes it up. It was just it's so weird. random, but I, I just went with it. I just said, oh, I don't really think about that at all. Oh. Sorry. So I uh, I started playing Rome Two Total War again because Off there's, the a, back there's of a, this. no because there's a big mod oh. called Divide et Impera which is like complete rebuild of the game nice. and makes it Divide so, and so, conquer, so good. Divide and conquer, I guess. Yeah, and it's so so so. Lewis, so put all this on your Tinder profile. Do divide, it. divide and rule. Yes. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's honestly, it's amazing. And <laughs> I've been streaming that. I streamed it yesterday. I started at 8.30, I finished at 5, and then I started up again in the evening and streamed for another four and a half hours. Nice. So I played like 13 hours of Rome. Wow, you have to link me there. That's crazy. Just check my VODs, dude. It's literally every fucking day. I, oh my God. Week. I tell you what I've been doing. I've been doing Jingle Jam Reach Out, right? Which is yeah. insane. Um, the amount of effort it is and the stress. It's like I get proper whiplash because some people are super nice some people are super stupid or super super dumb or super asshole um and it, it literally it's literally back and forth it's like some people send me the nicest messages ever like oh i'm so glad to be part of it i'll help however i can other people are like just they're so demanding or they like they want this and this and this and they're like oh and they keep going back and forth or they, or they just ask these awfully dumb questions or they just rude um it's 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 it's, it's weird but you just see so many games as well like that i've never played like I've I've added like a hundred games to my wish list over the last two weeks, just just looking at games on Steam. Yeah. Um. So I'm properly getting excited about games again. So the last few months I've kind of been like, ugh, games. Jeez, I, like, I played <laughs> I played Baldur's Gate three for like a hundred hours straight, pretty much. Um. Like 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 Flax said, like did er you finish early it? starts? Played again like in the evening, like twelve hours a day. Yeah, I finished it and I started another run right after. Uh, yeah. but I made it to I made it to Grimforge and uh and I was just like fuck I think I've just played too much Baldur's Gate 3 I got to take a break. <laughs> like I just way 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 too much. But also my second run was just like cursed immediately. Like I killed everybody in the grove by accident. So like oh everybody's God. dead. I killed Carlac. I killed. Oh she didn't God. want to join us in the first place. I wanted to see I wanted to have Will in my party the whole way through and he left. Uh, cause he was just like, you're, you, you're too awful. Cause like just everything <laughs> went you wrong. Got? You got Asterion, isn't there? He never fucking leaves. Asterion, so I got Asterion, Shadowheart. And, uh, now that Will's left, I've got a, a hireling. Oh my uh, God. A dwarf, a dwarf hireling to replace Will until, because we, because, because we slaughtered everybody in the grove. When you go to the goblin camp and you speak to Minthara, she's like, Okay, um, you know, let's 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 hit the grove, have a sleep, and I'll see you tomorrow. And then when you wake up the next day, she's like, Oh, you've already done all the work for me, hero. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> let's get let's have sex. <laughs> see, so you <laughs> you have for possibly the most awkward sexual encounter with Minthara. Like she's like fully jacking you off and everything. It's insane. And then uh, and then Will leaves because he's like, no, I don't, I don't like this. This is. Sick. And then yeah. you can't even find Halson because he's because he somehow finds out that you've done all this and wants nothing to do with you. Jesus. Right. Okay. Do Do you think that if you lost a character and replaced them with the companion you can hire from Withers, yeah. right? Are they just like a sex bot and you can just fuck no, them? No, it's and you it's, don't need to do it's, any it's Withers. They have no soul, so it's just Withers speaking to you through. 
But can this, you fuck with us through that bot? No, you can, you can, oh. you can barely interact this with This is them. the eternal question everyone seems to be asking. Can you fuck X? <laughs> yeah. so, it might, you might as well just play fucking hentai games, you horny motherfuckers. Yeah, but, but it's crazy because in Baldur's Gate 3, most of the time the answer is yes. But I think with hirelings, it's it's no. Because they don't... You're right, Sips. Loads of people have been hooked on, on Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just like you, Ozzy's been up playing it all night. Duncan's been playing it all night. Like um, it's, it's awesome. It, it's it, a, Honestly, it it's one of the in. best games I've ever played played but i think oh, i just played amazing. it a bit too much yeah, just i just take need a to break, take a break, take a break. Yeah. all right i got a question this is a change of topic but i just i saw this question on reddit and i thought it was pretty funny uh it is if you were living if living in england was a video game what are some of the tips you'd see on the loading screen right and the, the top one is you're right is just a greeting not an actual query that's the kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to think of tips that you would give people coming from abroad. Uh, I always like when when I go down. I always love talking to Sarah because obviously she lives in Bristol. Is a pretty sort of British sort of place, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, in, in 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 its sort of vibe, it's it's it must be quite a culture shock coming from from the states to somewhere like Bristol because um, it's it's very it's very very Bristoly if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's, it's very British. Yeah, and she is from Boston. New uh, New England is the most England of of, of America, isn't it? Mm, yeah, I even guess. then, though, it's just not. It does not prepare them for the British. I think Sarah's of adapted quite well, right? But um, I'd love to know, like, what are some of the the things that you really noticed? I think right. the biggest thing that she always says said to me when I asked her was the drinking. Yeah. Like right. the amount of drinking. And it's not just us, because when you go to the pub, there's fucking people out every night. Like it, it especially the weekends, it's a thousand people out drinking in this one sort of area. Um, it's a lot of fucking drinking. And after the go after work, going to the pub and having a drink with your colleagues is like a perfectly done thing. Yeah. Um and I think that's a big cultural thing is is drinking. I think I think you you use the word drinking as in in the literal meaning, but I think a lot of people use that as going to the pub. Not everyone, well, okay, ninety percent of people are are drinking at the pub, but you don't have to drink. You can have you you coke. you will not be accepted. You you will if you don't drink. You won't. I think a lot of people go to their after dinner, after work drinks. It's social. It's a social thing, right? For a lot of people, just to unwind. Yeah, but you can't be the the, the crucial point is a point very is, good sense of community. British people can't be social without alcohol because we are very uptight and we tend not to talk much we're not very animated unless we've had a couple of drinks that's when we have fun we have to use alcohol to break down our natural inclination to just hide and not talk and just nod politely and say you're right yeah fine. <laughs> you're talk about wrong. the weather yeah. there are a you lot of need, people we need drinking booze. far too much yeah um, but so if you come to britain and you want to go out with work colleagues and you just say oh i don't drink actually they will never like you they will never fully accept you you've I got to at least screen, drink a couple the loading screen tips should for me should be like bring an umbrella <laughs> that would yeah. just be one. Uh, if your hunger bar is going down and it's late at night, don't go to any of the kebab shops. Oh no, um, absolutely do go to the kebab shop. Yeah. <laughs> but make sure you know which one. Don't get a pizza in yeah. the kebab shop. Yeah, that the next loading tip can be the diarrhea pills that you're looking for are called Imodium. Uh, <laughs> they are available over the counter. <laughs> what other tips? Try the you try the Greg's sausage roll. Yeah, the, try the Greg's vegan sausage roll is actually pog. I'm giving that a that gets a, a thumbs up. From, from I, I mean, when I moved over to the UK from Canada, which is obviously very um, shares shares a lot of cultural stuff with uh with the with the US. Yeah, the yeah. North American sort of broad uh, culture. It was uh, there's there. It's it is a lot. It, it's just such a. In some ways, feels very familiar, and then in other ways, just feels completely alien. Like, and it just mm. there's so much of it that you just kind of meander your way through it and get used to it. But I, I can't think of like specific things. Maybe I've just lived here too long now. You've lived here a long time. Yeah. I mean, uh, when I moved here, I was obviously, I was only eight. So the, the big thing for me was how cold it was. Yeah. It's damp. And how it's wet so it was. so fucking damp, isn't it? Like it really was. Yeah. Like now, I, don't, I, just, I know I hate it, but I don't really notice it as being anything unusual. But when I, I remember moving here and just thinking, Jesus Christ, it's and it felt very grey. Yes. This was the 80s. This was the early 80s. So everything felt a bit grey and shitty. Uh, yeah. It's improved a ridiculous amount. Oh, it amount. has big time. Yeah. Even when I came, even like when I came over like at the end of the 90s or whatever, there was still a lot of stuff that felt like it was built in the 50s or the 60s and just really, looked just really a lot run of down and shitty. But now it's it, it's 
they've uh, there's there's been a lot of progress on that front like aesthetically i think a lot of stuff is starting to look a lot better more modern and that, i think they're you know changing a lot of of, of old getting rid of like a, a lot of like the older buildings so mm. in jersey as well it's the same there's a lot of old shit over here but it, they they just seem to be building uh, new stuff like knocking it all down and building new stuff which i i think is is pretty good cuz some of that stuff is old shitty looking and it's like kind of almost like oppressive you know that it, it looks it is very visually offensive <laughs> like he just some of these <laughs> old ass buildings you know like i, I don't know they, they're just they're just crap but then like they'll list some of them you know the really old ones if they're like victorian or whatever they have like nice uh nice finishing or you know they they're like heritage they'll they'll sort of keep like the the outside of the building but then mm. build a new building like inside or yeah whatever. I saw a place in Paddington, and the council had demanded that they keep the original frontage because it was quite old. Yes. So they had all these clever brackets holding up the whole front of a building, but it was only like two bricks wide. Yes. So it was like paper thin compared to the rest of yeah, yeah. The, all the buildings around it, and they had it all held up. Yeah. And then they built this brand new block of flats behind it, and yeah. then they just sort of glue them together. It was, it was pretty nuts. Yeah, they do that a lot over here because there are quite a few old buildings that that do look nice and they want to sort of preserve that um Style. you know like the heritage elements of it all mm. so so oh, certain God. things will just you know the front of the building will be uh protected and listed i'm all for it yeah i think the front of buildings especially older buildings were much nicer than the yeah bland shit we've got yeah now. I, mean, I don't know why they can't I, I, they don't want it. it it must cost a lot to to keep the old but like even like new buildings, I don't know why they don't just do a bit extra and make them look because they're lazy cunts. And yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. On the one hand, I totally agree, and it's so important for these local kind of areas to all look the same and fit into the road and look cool, right? And on the other hand, um, the busybodies who organise it and and flipping, you know, send the angry emails around to tidy up your garden or you know or or, or you can't have your things painted the right cut the wrong colours, you know, mm -hmm. oh. It's it's the classic two pronged mm. English thing, right? You have to fit in, but also um, there's always going to be a local Hitler who's going to fucking <laughs> be sending you angry emails and bothering you, and you know about the most trivial shit that you don't care about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 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 traditional. It's the way it is. Get used to it. Well, there you go. I think that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. Wait, I, I have one more thing. I, um, I just want uh, people can write into the mailbag about this as well if they want queuing in pubs. Very quickly, there is a Twitter account I follow that's basically like queues at pubs. This has become a thing. If you are a part of this, let me know why the fuck you're doing it. What was wrong with the old system? Why did it catch on? People forming a line like they're at the post office in a pub. The way you do it is you go up to the bar. You don't form a line. And you behind catch one the person. eye of the bartender. Right. And the bartender uh, or the, the bar staff should know who was here first and blah, blah, blah. That's part of their job. Believe me, they know what they're doing. They're perfectly capable of doing that. You do not form a fucking line. If I see it in Bristol, I'm breaking it up. <laughs> right. Okay. Just well, going to get right in there. No, disperse, please. Everybody disperse. This is not the way that you do it. Never get served at a bar because I apparently can't catch the eye of the people or I'm not I'm not aggressive enough. I am all for queuing. Let's be honest. Yeah. You don't have a problem because you're gigantic. P flats. You I lean think, over. Think, you hunch over. I think British like, people love to queue as well. Like I I th I I've been places in Britain before where there's nothing to queue for, but if enough people are standing in a line, other people will just join them naturally. It's like mm. I, I think it's like hard coded into like the the national psyche or something like I, I think they just love to queue sometimes i've been to the bar and i've been i've been there for 10 minutes and watching people get served left or right of me and i've said like hey like i've, I've even like start and, and that's me being more you know after a few drinks you know actually being not even not shirty but like like almost like being ugh, like tisking or like rolling my eyes when <laughs> someone gets served next to me when it was clearly my turn uh, but man, like I hate it. I, it's bring part on the of queues. It. No, fuck the queues. It's ridiculous. Pubs aren't built for it. Look at the bar. Why don't they? You people not queue more... at the bar, These, and people they lose their politeness use a as well because system with the number. Because like, because they no, it's very simple. Over. Here's here's the thing. It's a test of human character. You it's, you wait at the bar, and if you know you weren't first, but whereabouts at the you bar are you supposed say, to get served? There's like not just, dedicated areas, yes, there and is. sometimes you it's just happen to be in a void zone where no one is doing the serving. Obviously, you have to like keep an eye on the bar stuff and see which is their like area that they keep going back to, right? Because 
Each bar staff has like a specific bit of counter no. that they are returning no. to. They don't walk up and down the bar. They don't do it equally. You're wrong. You're, you're wrong. One on thing this. that helps <laughs> is if you hold money above your head, like in your hand. You know, that's like, rude. And if you <laughs> fold, I guarantee if you, you fold the you money have... like half of a paper airplane, almost, you know, and you hold it with two fingers right. up above your head as well. And if you if you just sort of use French terms, like if you say garçon. 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 Yeah. And, and if you snap your fingers at the bar stuff, do that. They love that. They love that. Right, yeah. Yeah. Final, final update before you go. Final update. I had a parking, a penalty charge notice issued on my vehicle at the start of the month. Uh, sorry, at the start of last month. I appealed it and I was successful. The system works. I didn't wow. have to pay Holy it. Holy shit. You didn't have to pay the £35 yeah. pounds or whatever. Okay, last, time, to last, last time I got one, I appealed it and they wrote back to me and they said, uh, no, sorry, um, it stands, but with no, they, there was no, they didn't go into it at all. Like they, there was no like defense or whatever. They're like, you have to pay it. And if it's not so, paid in three days, you're in big trouble. I spoke to a parking attendant the other day and she told me that she gets a bonus for each ticket she gives. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. That's, that's So that's why she hangs around waiting for the, the car to, that she knows is going to expire in like two minutes. Yes. Yeah, no, the thing with the with the with, the, with the because she gave the ticket to my cleaner. Yeah, right, but um, you don't want to give tickets if you 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 just you'd be one of those low key park attendants who walks around not giving tickets and thinking I, I get paid well, anyway. But, but you have to incentivize. Why do you so always see them in car parks? Like I get why you always see them in car parks, but at least at least if your car is parked in a car park. That's what it's for. Like they should be, they they should be ticketing these fucking assholes that park up on like uh, on the yellow line and stuff, and they and they hold up traffic and stuff, you know. But you never see them anywhere near where this is happening. Like I've been stuck in massive, massive, massive traffic queues because somebody's just decided they they're gonna park up, block a whole side of the road just to run in and get milk or whatever from the store. Where's the where's the tenant when that happens? Why are they were walking around a car park? Like at least those cars are parked up and out of the way, you know. Like that's yeah. time for citizens' justice. It, yeah, it's, it's crazy. We live you in a should, society. You should get, you should get like sort of fake, <laughs> uh, fake penalty notice. Yeah, and stick it on there. No, I just have a few of them I just, spare uh, in your I always, car. That, that one always gets me. I always wonder, like, because you're you're in there and you see them, and there's like two or three of them, and like, yeah, the car park's big, and yeah, you should get a ticket if you're not paying to be there. But surely the priority should be keeping the traffic flowing on the roads and stuff you know what i mean like don't just ju don't just park up like what well, yourself as a as a parking tenant or whatever don't just park up in a car park go out and 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 ticket all those those other guys that are just pulling over and blocking the roads and stuff those those are that that's the problem it's not it's not like the person who's forgotten to pay to use a a, a car park in my yeah, opinion the, 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 how do you track that you need like you need like some we need an app you need Everyone like a little segue just go around on a segue <laughs> just go just segue around everywhere and try to find these these culprits i read this thing where in america if someone's parked up in a really like on the curb on across the pavement or something you can sometimes call local tow companies and they yeah, 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 yeah. come and just tow that person yeah. um, and then take pictures when they're doing it and then they're sort of safe from the police yeah. or whatever. Or um, people people that, that, that park in the little uh, bus pull-ins as well. You ever see that? You know, like oh, I hate that. Yeah, and and somebody's just parked in there, but they put their hazards on. It's like <laughs> that doesn't help. <laughs> You're still in the yeah. way, and now the bus can't pull in to where it needs to go, and now everybody has to wait for you because you you are the main character out yeah. on the road today. Nobody got the Drives memo me that you were going to leave your house today, and you just they just treat it like they're the only fucking person in the world. It's insane to me that people. Act so, like oh, that. by the way, the reason it was cancelled, um, even though apparently according to this letter. I was in the wrong, but the guy that took the picture didn't take a picture of my car. He took a picture of something else. So, so <laughs> nice. They, they what do you mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, he just <laughs> fucked up the picture. So <laughs> okay, it, like a, he just took a picture of a building. So unfortunately, they can't prove that my car was um was there illegally. Yes, I park my building there evidence. every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your building is on. Does it have a permit, sir? <laughs> but yeah, so that's why. Oh, I mean, man. they they were gonna bill me, but then they checked and they're like, ah, oh, shit, the photo is fucked. <laughs> so I'm I'm good. Always so you got appeal. off on a technicality. I did on a literal Bullshit. piece of, of of like a, a piece of uh, incompetence on the park 
part of the officer, mm. the the enforcement officer, gets me off scot free. Go for it. The Par appeal is free. Parking, parking uh, enforcers and attendants out there, uh, write in. Uh, expand my mind on this because my my view of you is not great at the moment. But I I'm I'm down for context and they're nice enough. And, uh, it's, it's a job in it. It's a job in it. Um, well, that's, that, that we got to stop. Um, next week we're going to be doing Pickaxe Podcast Week live. Oh yeah, so we're doing a live podcast. So actually, when this goes out, the next day will be our live show. So there'll be sort of two, two in one week. It's a double thing. header. We'll Holy probably shit. put the live one out on the on this. I hope feed we have enough to talk after about. That. It's going to be awkward. We've got a week to figure it out. It's just it's just this, but live. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine? Well, I think we'll do a mailbag. Oh, that'll be Remember, fun. We'll Remember that yeah, time yeah. we did uh, we did the podcast on stage in front of uh, people? At, yeah, uh, I, don't even, I don't even remember what we talked Yogcon? about. Yogcon? No, I don't remember either. No, well, it's probably something like this. Probably talked about Bristol Art Museum and fucking, you know, Wales. I don't know. Whatever we talked about today. Uh, I've forgotten what we did literally today. Yeah. Welsh nationalism, goths. How hard it is to meet women. Um, goths, yes. Goths. Yeah, goths. Queuing at the pub. Yeah, queuing at the pub. <laughs> Lewis's new fashion look. Tips for being British on a loading screen for a video exactly. game. Exactly. We covered it all. Plenty of stuff. All right. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.